Flash games. We're talking about them again. But not just Mario and Sonic ones this time. I wanted to take a look at the super obscure ones that you can't remember the name of, but totally have that fuzzy image in your head that they totally did exist. Totally. Now before you ask, no, I do not have a Flash game addiction. This is the last video about Flash games, I promise. Unless you guys want more. Maybe. Need. More. Okay, but for real, I guarantee at least one of these will make you feel a little bit of nostalgia. As I've said before, I spent a lot of time browsing these websites as a kid and playing just the most random and dumbest games I could find. But I'll be damned if they weren't entertaining. So I did some searching and I managed to find a bunch of these Flash games that I absolutely adored as a kid. Many of which I'm sure you'll recognize. Starting with... Of course, how can you talk about Flash games without mentioning the one that everybody knows? It's Fancy Pants Adventure, bitch! A 2D platformer making incredibly good use of a simplistic art style, but super fluid and fun gameplay that sees you making your way across various worlds to find... <laughs> Spider! But, uh, yeah, so not gonna lie, those things scared the shit out of me as a kid. I could never make it very far into this game. Mainly because of the spiders, but it's the one that I would most be still willing to sink a bunch of time into purely because of how fresh and fun it is. It's got the speed of Sonic with the platforming and crushing the skulls of your enemies from Mario. The best of both worlds, if you will. And apparently now it's been ported to iOS, which I think is just super awesome that it's graduated from popular Flash game to super obscure mobile app that has definitely been buried by all the other garbage in there. And it's even gone as far as to have gotten a sequel that is full priced on Steam in the form of Super Fancy Pants Adventure. And it looks absolutely fantastic. Fantastic. So damn cool to see how far this little guy has come. Look, can we just get Fancy Pants and Smash already? Appealing to the murderous psychopath in all of us was Interactive Buddy, a game that lets you endlessly torture some poor bull man with a variety of way too many options. This game could not have been good for anyone. You had everything from chucking baseballs to launching a freaking nuclear strike and even throwing babies at him. At least I think those are babies. Oh, and you can blow the babies up too. The more you hurt him, the more money you got, and with that you could purchase more things to cause him excruciating amounts of agony. There is literally no point in this game past watching this little guy suffer, and yet it's strangely entertaining. Wait, I didn't say that out loud, you didn't hear that. Yes. I feel like a good person. Of course, one of the absolute best was Line Rider, which was a super cool game that lets you design your own path for this little bobsled dude to travel on. You could draw your track to your heart's content, making it as massively detailed or incredibly simple as you pleased. Now, I've been working on this one for a really long time, so I hope you like it. Come on, come on, come on, there he goes! Oh. Oh god. I think it'll be okay, which is a little fall. Oh god damn it! Let's see what other people have done online. <laughs> Probably not as good as mine. Oh. Oh my god. What?! Ha how?! So yeah, as we've seen with things like Mario Maker and Minecraft, if you give people the proper tools, they will make some absolutely insane shit with it. And I used to think what I made as a kid was impressive. Oof. <laughs> and very similar to it was a game called Free Rider that I actually preferred to Lion Rider since it gave you a bunch of vehicle options to play as, and a majority of them were super fun. It's been updated a ton since I used to play it, and it's honestly frustrating as hell to try and play now. No, I don't want to download your app, get away from me! But these two games kept me very, very busy as a kid, since there was just so much you could do with these tools. And I gotta say, it's super endearing that people are still making some insane stuff with them, after all this time. Okay, I got this. Ugh. Damn it, damn it, damn it. Oh. Shit, god damn it. Ah, come on. Okay, okay, this time. Next time. This time is it. That one doesn't count. Ah, come on. <gasps> I did it. Oh, I forgot I didn't put. Damn it. If you ever wanted to feel like an absolute badass, you could always turn to Bullet Time Fighting, a Matrix-inspired fighting game that lets you duke it out with an opponent in slow motion. What I always loved about this game was that it recreated many of the best moves from the actual movies. Like if you could flip all over the place and then slow down time and knock him down in the most epic fashion possible. Or you can, you know, just pull out a gun and shoot him in the face. Or you can do it in slow motion. Then there was Heli Attack 2, my first introduction to Bullet Hell games. In this game, you endlessly gun down helicopters that really, really want you dead for some reason, and it's basically just a test to see how long you can last before your character explodes horribly. You're also armed with a hyper jump so you can launch yourself into the helicopter blades and die, and time distortion, because as we've already seen, what isn't cooler in slow- I don't remember the controls being as bizarre as they are though. You move with the arrow keys and aim and shoot with the mouse, but all your power-ups are on the other end of the keyboard, so you kind of have to make a very quick switch. It's kind of dumb. Also, you have a suicide button. 
And while we're on the topic of helicopters, here's the original Flappy Bird. Helicopter game is a simple little title, and you click and hold with the mouse to go up and release to go down. But unlike Flappy Bird, it doesn't make me want to chuck my phone off the bridge, but it's kind of super hard. Couldn't do it then and still can't do it now. This is one of those games that you play for about two minutes before getting bored and moving on. Piece of shit! Hello, welcome to Pit My Ride. Today we're gonna go out and buy the sick Lamborghini much. And now we're gonna go over here and just pimp it out. We're gonna give it a white racing wheel, a phantom knob. <laughs> Can't forget the knob. Stock petals and two-seater racing seats. And then we're gonna make it pink because pink is the most badass color. And with that, it's time to race. Oh, uh, this is apparently my engine broke down. Huh. Then there's this game called Penguin Baseball where you play as a... Uh, and you hit penguins with a baseball bat. Oh no, they're here. The animal rights people who have sirens for some reason. The penguins were cool with it, okay? They were almost happy to be smacked with a bat. There is also a game called Spank the Monkey, where you can spank a monkey. That's... Yeah, spank the monkey. But if you hit it hard enough... I think I still hear the animal rights people. My regular go-to whenever I was stuck in class learning and all that boring crap was to head on to CoolMathsGames.com, a site that absolutely does not have any cool math games on it, and bust out this bad boy. Run 2. A game where you run. And it is awesome. You play as this little alien dude and have to avoid falling into the never-ending void of space by jumping. And obviously, you run too. <laughs> The best part about the game though is that if you hit the wall next to you, it rotates so that then becomes what you run on. This game was the savior of classrooms and the king of CoolMathsGames.com. Thank you to whoever made this website for bypassing skill filters and making class around the world just that much more bearable. Spewer is simultaneously one of the cutest and grossest games I've ever played. You take control of this adorable little guy and your ability in the game is that you throw up everywhere. Yeah. And then eat it back up. And swim in it. Blech. You use this power to make your way through various levels, putting your thinking skills to the test. It's a lot about conserving your vomit as you use it to propel yourself or protect against spikes. It's so gross, but so cute, but also so gross, but so cute. I'm no fan of strategy games, mainly because that involves thinking and I am not good at that. But Age of War is a game I found myself sinking way too much time into. In this game, you have to defend your base against enemy troops, and you do so by sending out your own troops to meet theirs. You gain money to buy said troops, as well as turrets, by killing enemies. The real appeal of this game, though, was the ability to evolve to the next age, done by collecting enough XP as time passes. You go from cavemen waving sticks around to knights, and eventually reaching the future. This is a game that takes time to go from start to finish, but it's always been super addicting and I just cannot work out why. Probably because watching cavemen kill each other is hilarious. <laughs> and finally, saving one of the best two last was Zhao Zhao. I think that's how you say it. I have no idea. Now this was a whole series of games featuring stick men beating the shit out of each other, but the only one I ever played as a kid was Zhao Zhao 4, so it's objectively the best one. It's sort of a time crisis-ish game where you make your way through swarms of enemies, guns are blazing. Now the way you're supposed to play it is to use your ammo carefully and then reload with the space bar, but you can also do it the cool way that I made up by spamming the space bar while you shoot so it automatically reloads and you never have to stop shooting. It's genius. And at the end of the game you reach a roof where you end up fighting your arch nemesis. It's purple guy, that son of a bitch. And so you engage in some matrix style fighting where you apparently freeze in midair to shoot and completely miss each other. And then you watch them fight. You don't play anything here, you just get to watch as your character gets the shit beaten out of him. Until... Well, that's all for me this time, but as usual, there's gonna be a ton that I missed. But I hope this video helped you rediscover a couple games that you used to play a lot, because it sure did for me. As I said, whether I do any more Flash game videos is entirely up to you guys. Be sure to let me know, and thank you for watching. Make sure to visit me on Twitter, send anything to my PO box if you wanna see your package open in a video, and check out my second channel, Button Smashers, where we will probably play some of these Flash games one day. When you die, people are gonna forget who you are in a hundred years, so your life is meaningless and pointless. <laughs> oh, there's a table tennis! This is so cool! I wanna do this forever. Hey, Half-Life 3 is never coming! <laughs> <laughs> Until then, see ya!